Welcome to the Futures Lab. So in today's session, we are going to add in another attack, a search and destroy attack, where the Octoboss is going to point directly at the player and charge at them. And it's going to behave similarly to the pirate attack. And we're also going to be able to put in a cool visual effect. Um, and we might even be able to add that to the pirate attack as well. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this, uh, we're going to use the drummer as the representation for the search and destroy attack. Um, and because we're adding in this other attack, I'm just going to make a change to our resting code. So look for define resting. I'm going to change some of these numbers so it's a bit shorter so that the attacks um, switch between a little bit faster, switches between the different behaviors. So click on that wait one seconds underneath switch costume resting and change it to 0.1 and then change glide to 0 0.5 and the other wait one seconds to 0 0.5 seconds. I'll just make the resting um, behavior a little bit faster. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to my blocks. All of this is gonna be in the octopus um, sprite. Click on the top left corner and click on make a block and we're going to uh, call this drummer attack. Move that define drummer attack off somewhere by itself. We'll come back to that later. And drag out drummer attack from the top left corner and put it inside the forever loop um, with resting and pirate attack. I'm going to put it underneath the pirate attack for now. Okay, so now let's put some code into our drummer attack. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to looks, we're going to grab switch costume to drummer attack. Um, now what we're going to do next is we're going to go to control, we're going to grab out wait one seconds but change that to 0.5 and we're gonna make this attack happen three times. So grab repeat, repeat 10, but change it to repeat three. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the octopus glide up to the top of the screen somewhere randomly. Um, so we're going to go to motion we're going to grab a glide one seconds to x, y, change that one to a 0 0.5. So the top of the screen, let's say, is 100. Um, that's high enough. So we're going to change the y coordinate of our glide to 100. But now we want the x to be random. We don't want it to be right on top of the player. We want it to be somewhere random. Um, so to do that, we're going to go to operators, the green category on the left. We're going to get out a pick random 1 to 10 and drop it in the X of our glide. And you can decide how wide the random sort of X position is going to be, how far left the uh, lowest point in our random number is and how far right it is. Um, so you can change these numbers if you want. But for now, I'm just going to choose minus 175 as the lowest number and 175 as the highest number. So that should be good. Um, and then we need to have the code that charges the octopus towards the player. So we're going to go to control and um, well, first, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to get the code that points the octopus at the player. So grab this repeat 10, put it right underneath our glide, um, change the repeat to 30, go to motion, the dark blue category, grab a point towards... It'll say mouse pointer, but click that white triangle because we're going to change it to rocket ship. So re repeat 30 point towards rocket ship. So let's test this first of all. Let's skip to our boss battle with our cheat code. 
So we've got our rest happens, and then the charging happens, the pirate attack. And then, now, the we have a problem in that the octopus is pointing towards the rocket ship, but the octopus is sideways. And that's because of how um, uh, the um, sprites in Scratch work. So there's two ways we could solve this. We could do some code to um, change the direction of the octopus. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the costumes. Just so it's nice and consistent, we're going to turn all of the octopuses, octopi, I guess, um, all of the costumes so that they are pointing towards the right. So that the tentacles are pointing towards the right, like so. So let's go to resting, go click on the select tool, grab everything, and drag it so it's like this. And do that with all of the costumes. Make sure that when you select all of the different parts of the sprite, you've got everything. And then that little curly arrow, that little um, curved arrow, or two arrows, I should say, at the bottom, just move it round until it looks like this. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to, need to put in some code to make sure that the octopus is pointing in the correct direction um, when the game, when the boss battle starts. Um, but, for, but we'll come back to that a bit later. So we've got our repeat 30 point towards rocket ship. Um, so what we need now is we need some code that makes the octopus charge towards the player and only stop when they hit the bottom of the screen. So now here's the thing, in our previous attack we just did a repeat 35 because we knew that the octopus was always going to be traveling the same distance. It was going to be starting at the top, moving all the way down to the to the bottom. It always started at the same height, so repeat 35 was fine. We can't do that here because depending on where the octopus is, it might be a long way if it's going sort of diagonally across the screen like that, or it might be a short way if it's going straight down, depending on where the player is. So we're going to do a repeat until. Um, so go to control, grab out a repeat until. And now this has to go directly underneath the end of the repeat 30 because this can only start once that repeat 30 has finished. What it's going to look like is the octopus is going to be just pointing at the player and moving like this, depending on how the player moves. So it looks like the octopus is aiming at the player. It's like lining up the shot. Okay, so we need to repeat until we hit the bottom of the screen. So we need to get a less than operator because we are going to um, measure what the Y coordinate of the octopus is. The Y coordinate is how high or low it is, how up or down it is, and once it reaches the bottom of the screen, it will be uh, 180, oh sorry, minus 180, or lower than um, minus 180. So we need a less than operator. That's this one here. The arrow is pointing towards the left. Um, we're going to go to motion, the dark blue category, look near the very bottom, grab out a Y position, put it in that first socket of our less than operator, then click on 50, we're going to type in minus 179. With some experimentation you might be able to change that a little bit, depending on how big the sprite is and how Scratch is doing, but for now it should work just fine if we type in minus 179. Um, what we're going to do now is we're gonna look up for move 10 steps, drag that out and put it inside our repeat until. Now, for, so you can change the speed of how fast it charges if, if you want. I quite liked 
if we move nine steps instead of 10 steps. If you want to change that, make it a bit slower, make it a bit faster, you can easily do that. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, control. We're going to get something very similar to what we did with the um, pirate ship code. In fact, let's just copy it across, shall we? Have a look around for your pirate attack code. Look for the if touching rocket ship, then stop all. Right click on that if. Duplicate, once you've right clicked, just normal click, duplicate. And now you've got this whole bit of code. Just drag that down and put it right underneath move nine steps. Nice and simple. And then the final thing that we need to do is we need to point the octopus in the correct direction again. So let's see, what direction do we want it to be pointing in? Um, if you grab, um, so go to motion, the dark blue um, uh, category on the top left corner. Um, look for uh, point in direction 90 and put that on the very bottom of this code and click on the 90. Now that's going to be pointing towards the right, but now our octoboss, its tentacles are the direction in which it's pointing. So we need to drag this around until it's pointing down. Okay, so you can use this wheel to point it until it's pointing down once you click on this, this number here, or you can just type in 180. Either way, you'll end up with point in direction 180. Now there's one other problem. If we end the game and the octopus is not pointing in the, the correct direction, we need to make sure that they start the next game pointing in the, in, in the correct direction. So go looking for one of our when green flag clicked. It doesn't actually matter which one you put this in, but make sure you put it in one of them. I'm going to put it in this one here that I'm zooming in on. We need to grab another point in direction 180. Put it underneath when green flag clicked. Okay, so let's test this out, shall we? Let's see if there's anything that we've missed. Let's skip to the boss battle. So now we've got the pirate, the pirate attack. That's all looking good. We can shoot the boss. Oh, I know I died. Let's try again. Rip. Um, all right, let's try not dying this time. To just make sure I keep moving. And remember, you can change some of these. Ah, now let's see if this works. So it, ah, that's good. It sort of. And there we have it. Um, so remember, you can change some of these numbers. Um, you can make the uh, pirate attack faster if you think it's too easy. Try, try experimenting with changing some of the numbers. See what works for you. There we go. And we've got our, our nice charge attack is working perfectly. You can also change the number of times they do these attacks before they move on to the next behavior. It's entirely up to you. Um, you can decide if the game is too easy or too hard and change it accordingly. And there's only one more thing that we can do, and that's we're going to do this cool visual effect for both of these attacks. And we're going to use clones to leave these after images. So this is optional. This doesn't really change the gameplay of the game, but I think it looks quite good. Um, so. Uh, you can decide for yourself whether or not you want to do this. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to control and we're going to grab a create clone of myself. Drag one of those out. Now for, we're going to put it in the drummer attack and we're going to put it right um, above move nine steps. Okay. So just a right above move nine steps, create clone of myself. So what we're going to do is these clones, they're going to fade away using a ghost effect and then delete themselves. Um, so let's get when I start as clone so that we can program them to do this. Drag it off by itself somewhere. 
and get a repeat 10, put it underneath when I start as clone, then go to looks, get a get change color effect by 25. Grab that out. We're going to change, we're going to click on um, the color and select ghost effect. And we're going to change it by, uh, let's see, let's try 10. Change ghost effect by 10. Then we're going to go to control and we're going to grab delete this clone and put it at the very bottom. So here we have when I start as clone, repeat 10, change ghost effect by 10, then delete this clone. Let's see what that looks like, shall we? So currently it's only in the drummer attack. So we'll skip to our boss battle. We'll make sure that we survive the pirate attack. And then look for the, and ah. Oh. So there we have this cool kind of blurring effect. Now, if now now something that we could now something that we could do is um, make that ghost trail happen um, a bit faster, make them fade out a bit faster. So if we wanted, we could change the ghost effect by twenty and the ghost effect at 100 makes them completely invisible. So there's actually no reason to do more than a repeat five. Let's see what that looks like. All right, gotta survive this pirate attack. All right, let's see what this looks like. Okay, I think that looks a little bit better. So yeah, now what we can do, if we want, is all all this code is still here. So if we want, we can just put another create clone of myself. And if we just put it right above the change Y by minus seven in our define pirate attack. So if you find define pirate attack, look all the way down, find look for change Y by minus seven. And let's see what this looks like now. That looks kind of cool. So this is optional, just a cool little effect that you can do if you want. And there are some cool sort of changes to that code you can make if you want. Um, you can change the, the sort of amount of trail that you're making. Just bearing in mind if you make lots and lots of clones, um, and keep them around for a really long time without deleting them, your game will start to get pretty slow, especially if you're putting these graphical effects on them. So if you sort of create like a massive stream of clones, you might find that your game starts to get a little bit slow. So bear that in mind. Well, look, that's all that we were gonna plan on doing today. I hope that's been fun. Um, next time we're gonna do the teacup attack and we'll probably um, finish up with maybe some code to mix up the different attacks. Um, we'll see how we go with that. The teacup attack is gonna be a little bit more involved than the previous two. Um, but until I see you guys next time, take care of yourselves, be cool to each other. Check out the Futures Lab um, on um, uh, at City of Swan Library. So we've got a lot of cool in-person events that we're doing. Um, and if you have any problems, if your code's not working, um, or if you've got any suggestions, some games that you'd like me to make, um, then leave some comments. I've had a few recently from um, someone who's asking me to make a 3D game in Scratch. So I'll give that one a try maybe in some time, at some point in the future. In the meantime, maybe check out um, you uh, do a YouTube search. You might find some other people doing some good 3D games on Scratch. Um, and I'll see you guys next time.